and in the Lord's Prayer, he gives us a guideline as to how to pray. Now, you can just repeat the words, and, you know, we pray the prayer at the beginning of the service. That's good. It's to remind us of what God has taught us to pray. But actually, the words are, in one sense, a kind of pattern prayer. They tell us how to approach God and what's needful when we pray. But they can actually become vain repetition. And, you know, I mean, some people just pray the prayer over and over again, and it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, my, my, my little sister was... Uh, my parents sent her to a Catholic school for some reason. I'm not quite sure because we went to Church of England, but uh, that's another story. But she went to the Catholic school, and uh, every day in the beginning of the uh, assembly, they'd pray the Lord's Prayer. They'd pray it in the old-fashioned version, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc. One day she came home and said, Mummy, I know who Father John is and Father Philip and Father Patrick, but who's Father which art? <laughs> Because every day we say, Father, which art in heaven? <laughs> um, I guess it's like a sort of, you know, just words which you don't understand. And sometimes people do pray those sort of prayers. They, they don't understand what they're saying. It's just words. But God wants us to understand. And just briefly, let's go through the Lord's Prayer and just say what it's telling us, what it is saying to us. Our Father in heaven telling us the nature of God, that we do have a Father in heaven who loves us, who is the maker of all things, the creator of all things, who knows all things. And he's in heaven, and we're on earth. He exists in a certain place which we can't actually physically get to, but we can call upon through prayer. Uh, and God exists, so obviously if you pray, you are believing that God exists, and... Uh, you're believing also that God is there in heaven and that he cares for you and he loves you and he knows you. Uh, and the Bible also tells us that he is separate from sinners. So Jesus Christ is separate from sinners, uh, but he's made a way in which we can come into a relationship with us through the gospel. Hallowed be your name. Uh, hallowed means set apart or holy. Uh, Jesus' name is holy. God's name is holy. You should never use his name as a swear word or... Uh, but his name is a holy word, name, holy name. Name Yeshua, Jesus, means salvation. So when we call upon the name of God for salvation, we're calling upon the name of Yeshua for our salvation through faith in Jesus the Messiah. And God is holy, and we are giving him the praise and honor that due to his name. And again, this speaks about praise, uh, giving thanks to God for who he is, praising his name, worshiping him through faith in Jesus. Your kingdom come. How does God's kingdom come? Uh, in speaking to Nicodemus in chapter 3, Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, you must be born again. So when you pray your kingdom come, you're actually, one thing you're praying is to receive the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus, to be born again of the Holy Spirit. And when you're born again, you want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. So you want the Holy Spirit to be in you to cause you to grow and to dwell in you so that he may change you for the person he wants us to be. And we should pray to God for the kingdom of God to come within us as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, to change us, and to be, that we may become indeed that new person in Jesus Christ. Uh, actually, there are three stages in the life of a believer. One is regeneration. What happens when you're born again? The third stage is glorification, which is what happens when you get to heaven. The second stage, which is the important one we're in now, is sanctification. So we're now on the road between being born again to being glorified in heaven. And as we're on that road, we pray that God may sanctify us, make us holy, make us the kind of person who God wants us to be. So when you pray, your kingdom come. First of all, you're praying for yourself that the kingdom of God may come within you that you may see his work within you to sanctify you, to make you the person who God wants you to be. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Obviously, what is happening on the earth today is not what God's will is. And we see so many examples all around us in every society, including our own, of people going right against the will of God, against what God wants us to be, the kind of people God wants us to be. And in one sense, you could say that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is a kind of intercession You're praying for people to repent of their sins to believe to stop doing wrong things and start doing right things 
to pray for our nation, for our government, for people around the world who are suffering because of evil governments and pray that they may be set free from this. Uh, pray to restrain evil and to, to promote good, that God's will may be done in heaven, on, in earth as it is in heaven. And we know ultimately that the time when the will of God is going to be done on earth uh, and when the kingdom will come is when Jesus returns. So in one sense, you're also praying for the second coming of Jesus because when Jesus returns, he's going to put right all the evil that is happening this time on the earth and to make establish his kingdom that we might know his presence with us. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, meantime, while we're on earth, we have the essentials of life and we can bring before the Lord our basic needs. God knows that we have need of food, we have need of shelter, we have need of uh, the essentials of physical life and there's no reason why we shouldn't ask God to give us those things and give thanks to God when he does give us these things. Uh, give thanks to God for the food we have. Give thanks for the God that, for the homes we have. And pray for those who don't have those things. Uh, give thanks to God for our daily needs. And it's legitimate to come to God and ask him to give to us what we need to live on. Don't ask him for a big mansion and millions of pounds because that's not what he wants. But ask him for what we need. And he's quite open to hear our prayers on those subjects. And to give us a heart also to sh share what we have with those who don't have, uh, that they may have something with which to live on. Also, bread does speak of the daily life, uh, the word of God. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. He said to feed on him. And so to pray that we may receive the daily bread, the bread of life, through faith in Jesus. Forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Obviously, our most basic need when we come to faith to approach God is that we are sinners. And therefore, we need someone to forgive our sins. And we know that there's one way in which our sins can be forgiven. That's through faith in Jesus Christ, who died for us, shed his blood in order to redeem us. And so we ask God to forgive us for our sins. And as we forgive those who sin against us, uh, don't hold grudges and don't seek revenge against people who've done you harm. Pray for them to be saved. Uh, pray for those who've done us harm, that they may turn to God through faith in Jesus. It's a bit of a question mark sometimes about forgive us, forgiving people who've done awful things. But sometimes when there's been terrorist attacks, uh, Christians come up and say, I forgive the person who's done the terrorism. I have a bit of a problem about that, because unless the person actually repents, you cannot, they can't be forgiven by God. Uh, you cannot hold them in judgment, but... We have to commit them to the Lord that they might repent and believe. If they've blown themselves up in the terrorists, then they won't be able to do that anyway. Uh, but we have to remember that ultimately forgiveness only comes when we personally repent of our sins and believe in Jesus. It's interesting that Jesus prayed on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, but that didn't make them forgiven. Uh, a little bit later when Peter is preaching, he says, I know that you did it in ignorance, crucifixion, but now repent and believe in Jesus Christ, that times of refreshing may come to you. So when you say someone is forgiven, bear in mind that they're not forgiven by God unless they repent and believe. So we may not hold the grudges against them and seek revenge, but we have to also commit them to the Lord and pray that they might repent and believe in order that they may receive forgiveness. Uh, and forgiveness actually only comes to the person who repents and believes the gospel. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, Satan exists. Just as we believe that God exists, we also believe that there is a devil who exists. He goes about, according to Peter, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the name of Jesus. We do have an enemy out there. Uh, Satan even tempted Jesus. Uh, but Jesus didn't fall for his temptation unlike us. But he says, lead us not into temptation. Ask God not to lead us into the way of temptation. Now we have a duty ourselves to make sure that we don't lead ourselves into the way of temptation. We have the duty to make right choices. You know that there are all kinds of evil influences around us, especially on the media, on the TV, on the internet. 
We have unsaved friends and families who want to lead us away from the Lord, tell us that we don't want to follow Jesus and we don't want to go to church, you don't want to have to do all these things. Uh, there are people going to be out there who are going to try to trip you up and stop you from following Jesus. And we have to know that these things are coming. Don't go into the way of temptation. Uh, so we could say, lead us not into temptation, but we have a responsibility ourselves not to put ourselves in the place where we're going to be tempted. Don't watch porny movies or anything like that. Don't watch things which are going to incite you to violence. Uh, don't listen to people who are going to push you into drugs or to anything which is harmful to you. We know that there are people out there who want to trip you up, want to do you harm. And behind them there is one supremely who does want to do you harm, that's Satan. He exists. He's not a figment of the imagination. And as I said, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he's stronger than we are. But we have one who's stronger than he is on our side. Praise God. When Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, he defeated the powers of darkness. He overcame Satan. And through faith in Jesus, we too can overcome Satan. And we can overcome his evil activity and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he concludes the prayer with the words. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Let's know that ultimately the victory is with Jesus. If you're on the side of Jesus, you're on the side of the ones who have the victory. That Jesus has overcome, that he is glorified in heaven, and that he is eternally in control. He's eternally the victor. And if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're on the victory side. We've turned away from the one who is defeated at the cross, and we've turned to the one who is victorious. And in Jesus, we have the victory. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus, you have a living faith in Jesus Christ, you're assured of the ultimate victory in your life, in Jesus. And the ultimate victory is that we're going to be with him forever. And he's going to take us, change this vile body, as Paul describes it in one place, to be likened unto his glorious body. Take us out of this realm to be taken into his realm, where we'll be forever in his presence, in glory. And we will have an eternity to praise God and to praise our Lord, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, who has won the ultimate victory and who is ever reigning in heaven making intercession for us and coming again soon, I believe, in power and glory to establish his kingdom on earth prior to the eternal state in which we'll be with him forever in the new heavens and new earth. So we have the ultimate victory, and as we pray to the Lord and we believe in the Lord Jesus, we can have strength to continue, even in the world today as it goes further and further away from God, and as we see so many things happening around us which in the natural would drag us down, be lifted up by faith in Jesus and trust in him for his eternal victory.